Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. Be sure to get your free 19 business courses. First link below. If you are up on your game, you could be making some money by this weekend. Let's talk about marketing. Let's talk about word of mouth marketing. Let's talk about marketing. Let's talk about word of mouth marketing. There are many people that have businesses they've built from word of mouth. And they'll tell you with pride, oh, I don't advertise. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of HustlersKungFu.com. Be sure to take advantage of those free 19 business courses. First link below. Who knows, if you get started this weekend, you could potentially be making a lot of money. How to start your business fast. Let's talk about marketing. In this edition of How to Start Your Business Fast, we're going to talk about the true way to market. How important marketing is, what you should do to get the most bang for your buck, and to let you know word of mouth could actually end up in your business shutting down. Word of mouth. People just find me. And you know what? It works. It works very well. But there's one thing wrong with word of mouth marketing. Yes, something is wrong. It is slow as fuck. If you're starting your business today and you relied solely on word of mouth marketing, that's it. No push, no influencers, no strategy. The chances of you going out of business or running out of steam are great waiting on word of mouth marketing. That's one of the reasons the Fortune 500, the Fortune 1000, the Fortune 1500, the Fortune 2000, the Fortune 5000 actually all have advertising budgets. They all have marketing budgets, marketing consultants, marketing teams, marketing people. Because word of mouth is great and it's part of their brand and it's part of their marketing strategy. But see, it is part. It is not the only marketing strategy. So having this conversation with a client today and last week we got into it because she was like, well, I get by on word of mouth marketing. So I forced my client to do some things that were very unnatural, very uncomfortable. She had to promote her business. She had homework and task. Now this client does about 20 grand a month from word of mouth marketing. Good money. Anybody would love to be making $20,000 a month or more. Well, last week she put herself out there. She followed the recommendations and fifth day of April right she's already made $17,000 so she's gonna double or potentially triple her revenues this month because she's no longer relying on word-of-mouth marketing also we had another thing I have an equity clause with her where she's gonna pay me more money this month than she would have paid me just for my basic services. See, this is the thing, and I'm gonna just go ahead and tap my chest, just thump my chest. I'm going to win, and I have a lot of faith in me, and uh, some people have been like, hey, would you like to enter into partnerships, or I, you know, take a gamble on me. Sure, I'll do it. Three times my normal rate. Four, five times my normal rate. Now, <laughs> it's like, hey, you wouldn't, I was like, nah, we're locked in this contract for the next three months. At the 90 day window, we can revise um, terms because that's when something else starts. So just a thought to those of you who are just dependent upon word of mouth marketing. It's great. It should be part of your system, but it should be not your only system. Now, one of the things that really hurts many small business owners is the fear of marketing because when you market 
you're going to spend some money and it's not going to work because part of that is testing your market testing your copy testing 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 test you got to test the picture you got to you got to test the headline you got to all of this takes time effort and money and you don't have to spend a lot of money you can test very well for like you know five bucks a day because if it converts at five it's going to convert at 20. if it doesn't convert at five it's not going to convert at 200. just not so that's one of the things that you have to understand about spending money on your marketing and one of the reasons that you want to do that is you can scale faster by spending the appropriate money in the appropriate channels in six months than a business that's been in existence for five or six years if you are willing to test if you're willing to put forth some effort and let these preconceived notions go well you know give you an example I'm a consultant and many people found me no I've done no consulting here in Atlanta none it has been I've been everywhere but Atlanta I mean from Israel to China UK Africa yeah I've been everywhere many other states but nothing here in Atlanta and there was this thing, well, you know, since he's such a consultant in Atlanta, it's this, I don't consult in a conventional manner. I am a digital citizen. I'm a YouTube dude. I'm an internet dude. There are many people who are clueless to how the internet works. So the people who find me are interested in building something. They're interested. So it, I, I find it kind of funny because one of the reasons that I can do this, and this is a lesson for you, this is a big ass lesson for you, is I spent a decade selling locally. I'm paused for a reason. Many people are trying to go sell online without learning how to sell, period. If you can sell locally and you're willing to dedicate some time, effort to copywriting, uh, if you notice, my thumbs, thumbnail game has improved. A properly placed thumbnail can increase viewership of a video by 30 to 50%. The thumbnail is that fucking important. Then the next thing, the thumbnail alone could do it. Then the next thing is the headline. That's real important too. Then after that, I mean, th there's so many little things that you have to do and put into play to be successful in this game. And many people are not willing to put in the work. Now, what is marketing for your business? Because we gotta parse this down. You'll have people who will use the word, and right now I'm doing it and I'm guilty. So I'm gonna actually clean it up. Marketing for your business may be different than marketing for Ed's business or Jill's business or Carl's business. There's no such thing. Industries have certain practices. Say you're selling a million dollar product. You got folks on planes. Your marketing team buys plane tickets and, say, and stays in hotels. Nobody is going to spend seven to eight figures with you without at least meeting your ass once. That's just, even if you have a strong reputation. So what? You're going to be on the plane. So if you're in that area, if you're selling like that, you got to understand how that game is played. Uh, I've got a friend on Facebook who's really high powered and she sells million dollar programs. And she said, quote, if you want to sell programs like I do, you've got to go where the customers are. They're not on Facebook. They're not on Twitter. They're not on Instagram and other places. Now, I disagree with her a little bit because some of these people are on Instagram and they're clearly on YouTube. Everyone goes to YouTube to learn how to do some shit. I don't care if it's just like switching out a fan in the computer. Now, they may not you may not find you, but they're there. <laughs> I'll say that. But she, you know, to get that type of 
game going, you got to meet people. Now, there are many internet people, such as myself, and the digital citizens who are selling programs from $97 roughly to $2,000 or $2,500. That's where it really starts to slow down in terms of sales. Because when you get to the $5,000 mark, the $10,000, the $15,000, a lot of different things happen because you know someone made a comment about me taking a lot of money through PayPal. Now, one of the things that is for certain for certain business models, you gotta take credit cards, and taking credit cards will drastically increase your sales. This has been proven. This has been proven over and over again. So that that's just part of the game. Now, once you get to the $5,000 mark, $10,000 mark, $12,000 mark, you want to take a check or a bank transfer. Or in the case when I did the $50,000 deal, that was a wire transfer. For one, he didn't have a credit card with that kind of limit. Very few people do. Number two, when you get to past 15 grand, merchant account processors start freaking the fuck out on you. They will like hold you, they'll call you up. It's like, hey, we just got this transaction for 15, this happened to me recently. For, you know, well last year, $15,000 and we just won. And they put a hold on it for seven days. And then the client had to provide documentation that, and that's when they released the money. So this whole thing about, I mean, it is everyone is deeply concerned with risk now what the hell does this have to do with marketing well you can market for features and benefits or you can market to get paid now I post my prices and many people's like well you shouldn't post your prices and you know if they can afford no that's that's part of marketing it's part of marketing by posting your elite prices it makes your less than elite programs or your regular programs sell better yeah so this whole notion of well i'm not going to post my prices it's not like they're going to click on the button and go oh shit it's fifteen thousand. but since he didn't post it i'm gonna buy no <laughs> it's not gonna work <laughs> they need to know they need to know what they're getting into and many people are just um, kind of clueless because they never dealt with that type of business model. Now let's get back to niche marketing for your business. And this is one of the reasons that I'm very, very big on service businesses. You can have a service business and start here in April and by the summer be well on your way to a six figure income if you're full time, let's talk, let's just say that this is not a part time thing, you're full time. If you're out there beating the bushes, selling, if you have a marketing plan in place, if you have a referral plan in place, if you've got your CRM, that's your customer relationship management software, Salesforce, Goldmine, whatever you're using, tight, you can do that with a service business online business you can have all of that going on and I've seen people scale up to six figures selling a physical product because it's either we like it or we don't it's very simple very static situation yes or no but what are the product costs because I was reading this uh, case study today and they scaled up to 180,000 and I looked at what they're selling is between 29 and 150 so you can immediately take 100 G's for product cost if they're using, because they were getting into it, because I didn't finish it. I don't know what, the, I think they were using Instagram. But that's right off the top. Then you got employees. See, this, this is why I hone in and repeat this. Selling seven figures in one year does not make you a millionaire unless you sell five million and after interest taxes expenses all that you still got seven figures liquid you are a millionaire 
but just because you sold seven figures gross and I don't care if it's a hundred million if the profit margins are whack you still are not a millionaire you might get quote an internet valuation you might be able to get someone to spend some more money to support the game you've got going on but I'm amazed at how many businesses are predicated on attention and not selling anything not there's no workable business model there was this one I had posted in the group before it was gone and they had it and they were scaling and they, they, they were on their fourth round of money and you know talk about this in terms of marketing each time you go through a round of financing you lose part of your company that can be huge if it's successful because by the time you've gotten to the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth round, you might own five or eight percent of your company. There was a lot of people when the company went public and they didn't do like super well and they just did like 30, 40, 50 million, 60 million. And owners, the person who put in 80, 90, 100 hours of work a week got like 500,000. And everyone else got paid. So that, that was another reason that I say don't be overly romantic about these internet models because they are flawed. And everyone looks at the unicorns as if they are the norm. They are the unicorns as they prance through the digital landscape looking so swagged out. But they are still unicorns. That's what they are unicorns not the norm not the herd they are rare they're the exception they're like finding you know nine carat diamonds on top of the ground it happens but it's rare it's not the norm so in terms of marketing your business you got to sit down and part of marketing is what you're selling and how you engineer it and how you put it together that's why marketing has to be in the early stages of your business development because if you don't really factor that in you can build a product no one wants <laughs> you could build a service no one wants you could have something that people need but if it's not a, in the language that they are talking like you know going back to YouTube you know your YouTube title is part of your marketing and if you're you saying how to build a wooden bench which is pretty straight to the point and you might get some people that way but if people are looking for a wonderful red bench de you know do it yourself or they're looking for a blue t-shirt with Superman on it you know being a product that's very very important but if you know what I do people are not looking to work 60 to 100 hours a week for the next four years they're looking like how can I make a million dollars that's what they're looking for they're not looking for the nuts and the mechanics no one gives a shit about the nuts and bolts it's all about the results and that should be part of your marketing that's that's a big big part of it and that's going to be very very important to your success because when I started on YouTube the rules were different the rules were different uh, I will give you something else for you youtubers there are people out there who are talking about closed captioning that's when you upload a transcript to YouTube to give you quote more SEO okay now this is one of the things about being a technician being down where the nuts and bolts are that used to be really really big really really big now if your video has a great thumbnail and your video has great title and you have uploaded a caption but some chick who's hot as fuck uploads her face with the pouty lips on the same subject doesn't halfway talk about it but she looks real good like good and her dudes are like rewinding the video which gives it a higher audience retention rate it will crush your video now how do I know I did that for someone 
no uploaded transcripts. We focused on the thumbnail. We focused on the title. And I told her, because you know she's hot, and I said, this is what you do, and this is how you hook them, and the shit's doing well. Now, there are many people who want my references, and I'm gonna say this, because some of the people that I've helped the most do not want it put out. And this chick is blowing up. She's blowing up and she's paying me. So I'm we're all happy. But the whole point is, you know, I give you that because if you're going to market from theory, because I made the distinction of technician level, I see a lot of stuff from a lot of YouTube people who've been around who they're not charlatans, they're not in comp they're not incompetent. They're operating on stuff that used to work because they're no longer technicians. If they were to get back to the technician level, they'll be like, oh shit, this doesn't work anymore. And that's where I'm at. I do this every day. So when I hear somebody talk about YouTube and like, well, I'm like, no, it doesn't work. And I can say that with a high level confidence because I'm at the technician level. You should be at the technician level with your marketing. I know the whole thing is the outsource, get someone on Fiverr. Well, I make all my own thumbnails. I do all of my own video editing. I do everything in terms of video. I have offhand, I've handed other things off to other people. But this video thing, I do it all. And if you do your marketing and your sales, which you'll probably have to do in the beginning, you will learn so much you would be able to be in conventions about marketing and people will be talking about stuff and you'd be like, that shit doesn't work. And you'll know why? Because you know. Not because you think, not because you fucking feel, not because your balls are tingling. It's because you know that is valid and true, not only in your business, but across other businesses because you're a technician and you're testing and you're learning. Now this is the thing about being a technician. And this kind of goes back to what you, your marketing can yield you in the future if you're at a technician level. I'm opening up Attention Graphic Media. I already bought the URL. Because I see so much wrong with YouTube marketing. Because I, I, I see people who make a lot of money from consulting who, whose channels suck ass. And if they would like make one, two, three, four tweaks, their channels would be decent. And I'm like, okay, since you don't know about those one, two, three, four, shit, what the fuck are you marketing? How you're making your money? Now, also, they may operate at a corporate level. Uh, operating at a corporate level, a company may say, we got 50 million and we've dedicated 5 million to video. Come on in and do something for us. That happens. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I'm opening attention graphic media. That happens. Some of these larger brands have $500 million a year marketing budgets. And video is going to be a, an ever increasing part of that budget. And there's not that many people who operate at the technician level who also have sales experience. Now, what this means for you, if you go ahead and you stop trying to run from work, you stop trying to run from struggle, if you go ahead and take those days where your head hurts from thinking too hard, four years, five years from now, that expertise that you've built at the technician level could make you a millionaire, as well as what you're doing with your business now. That is why it is so important to do your own work. That is why it's so important to learn, to jump into the fray. That's why it's so important. So you got people out here who want to make marketing simple. From a technician level, you don't want marketing to be simple. If marketing is simple, you don't have your own nuances there, you haven't put together your thing, then someone can go to your page, look at what you're doing, and hack your shit. But if your marketing is complicated, if your marketing has several moving parts, it's very hard to duplicate and steal. Not impossible, but challenging. And if it's challenging, more and more of those low hanging fruit digital citizens are gonna like, ah, fuck that. I'm going over here. 
because what's going to happen is someone's going to hack it and make the complicated very simple and bring down the price and flood the market I, aka what's happening with amazon fba right now what you saw with that stock thing where if you have slow moving stock and they're like getting rid of your shit and not accepting it oh you're gonna see much more of that because of the open nature of the internet it's very easy for a market to become a commodity something that was super niche something super hot and then people start chatting and sharing information and a matter of months or a year or so it's a commodity i have seen products that were selling for 150 currently at 40 and 50 dollars that is great for the consumer but that shit sucks ass for the business person because you can see your profits go down and you can see your cost go up who wants that the consumer does but not you so just some things for you to think about in terms of putting together your business in terms of looking at your marketing plan and you should have a marketing plan and one of the reasons I'm not going into quote detail is there can be 30 different business people watching this video and each one will have to deploy a different marketing tactic for their industry I can't cover 30 would-be uh, possibilities but I can give you a structural overview of what everyone has to start with which is you must know your market you must talk in the lingo of your industry and you must alienate people for your marketing to be really on point you have to get rid of people that your product or service doesn't sell because it's not for everybody you know it's a hustler thing all right this is Glendon if you are a business owner and you want to make more money with your business and you qualify you get a free call the numbers right after this video be sure to like subscribe and comment